This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to make some pork jerky. For the cut that I'm going to use today, it's a boneless pork blade roast. I love blade steaks, and so blade roast is a really good cut to use. The only downside, of course, is a little fatty. For the, our main products today, we're going to be using Smokehouse brand products and the Big Chief Smoker. For our seasoning, I picked the Smokehouse Products Black Pepper Jerky Seasoning. Now, I like a lot of pepper and garlic on my pork, so I went ahead and used this one, but you could use regular and then modify the seasoning to whatever seasoning you wanted. Now, we're gonna go back in time to yesterday, and you're gonna see the prep work that I did for the jerky, plus this morning what I had to do to get it ready. So let's go ahead and take a look at that video. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the meat here. I have taken a pork blade roast, and this is boneless, and then I took it and I sliced it down the middle, and then I ran it through the meat slicer to get nice uniform slices. I did put it in the freezer for a little while before I sliced it, probably a little too long, but if you put it in the freezer for 30 to 45 minutes before you slice anything through your slicer, it'll work a lot better. You want the inside to still be thawed, but the outside to be crispy frozen. So just not all the way through, just enough to hold it firm. I went ahead and sliced that all up. This is a little over two and a half pounds. So I think we're almost at three here, but not, not quite. So when we do our measurement, we don't want to be under on the spices because we need the salt and the cure to come out good so that way we get a nice little cure on the meat so it'll be more shelf stable. Now of course I don't trust any of my food to be fully shelf stable so I like to keep it refrigerated after I've processed it and then I'll put it in a small bag, vacuum it or whatever I do and keep it in the refrigerator for the time that I think it looks good. If it starts to grow, obviously, then it has to go. So just keep an eye on it. And if you're gonna keep it for a long term, throw it in the freezer. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take out some of the mix. Now, I haven't opened this bag yet, but you can see it's just a simple bag and it does have a Ziploc in there. The recipe is on the back for their recommended measurements. And what it says is one tablespoon per pound of meat. So we're gonna go ahead and use three tablespoons and I'll put it in a separate bowl here. Because this is pork, we're gonna go ahead and add a tablespoon of garlic to that. Now that of course is to taste, that's just my personal taste. Now just for a little bit of extra curing powder, we're gonna add one quarter of a teaspoon of prog powder. A lot of people weigh their powder and it is a really good idea when you're doing a large amount if you want a full cure, you wanna make sure that you've weighed it out and get it proper amount. A lot of people don't know. The reason that this is pink is it's colored so that way you don't make a mistake and confuse it for table salt. Too much of this stuff can really mess you up. So now I've got it all in there and I'm gonna mix it really good. So I'm gonna make sure I get that pink salt mixed in there and we'll be right back. I've got it all mixed up now and because I put the pink salt in, it's gonna need time to cure. So it's not like we're just gonna follow the directions and rub it on there and then smoke it off. Now, of course, that would work just fine if you're just gonna follow what it's on there. And you, as long as you dry it out enough or even run it through a dehydrator, you should be good. You just need to get that water content down so that way it lasts a long time. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of this in here. Just a little across the bottom. And then I'm gonna load some of that in and add a little more as I go.
I saved out this one last piece so I could talk about something real quick is that you see how there's fat running through this what's going to happen is is that this stuff will break right where the fat is and so it'll come apart so this looks like a beautiful piece that would make a really nice piece of jerky but the odds are that a lot of this stuff is going to break up then i get all the seasoning in there like that. Now I'm going to seal this with air in the bag. And if you're really OCD, tape it closed. Then I'm going to tumble it for a while. It's going to take me about five minutes to make sure that the seasoning is well mixed. So shake it around a little bit. Try not to shake it around when it's upside down, shake it around when it's like this, or hold it over the counter so if you do have a problem, then it'll come apart there. Once you've got it all shaken around like you want it, find yourself a bowl that's larger than the bag and place your bag inside the bowl and then put it in the refrigerator. If you'd like, you can let out the air at this point but the main purpose is, is that you want to let the salt have a chance to start drawing some of the liquid out so that way it will start the osmosis process. Again, this is not part of their normal directions. This is how I apply a cure to my jerky before going into smoke. Same thing happens when I do my salmon. Um, the only key thing about this is, is that you can put this in a bag, you can put it in a glass bowl or stainless steel, and there is some other types that you can use, but don't use aluminum. It will react with the sodium and then it'll just taste terrible. So I'm going to let some of the air out now. I'm going to wait a couple more minutes for that to finish thawing and I'm going to tumble a little bit more and then I'll pop it in the refrigerator overnight. So now it's the next morning and first thing I did this morning when I woke up was I got up and I uh, gave it another little mix. So I'm just working it in and making sure that the stuff is moving around a little bit real good. And I really think it looks pretty well distributed and basically evenly covered, which is what we're mainly going for, and then the time to rest so that way the prog powder or pink salt has a chance to work along with the uh, jerky seasoning and work itself in to the pork really well. Now, I did turn this every hour for the first three hours while it was in the fridge before bedtime and then right when I got up and let it sit there. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to spread it on the trays. As you know I love to use the grill mats and then here's one of the trays for the Big Chief smoker. So I'm just going to set the tray in here and then the grill mat in and I'm going to spread it out. The next thing is, if you want to add any final seasoning, of course, you can add a little bit more of this. I wouldn't go crazy because you've already got a lot in there, and I don't want to overdo it on the salt content. If you'd like, you could just take a simple pepper shaker and add a little more, but with the pepper jerky, I probably wouldn't do that. I would consider a little bit of brown sugar. I'm currently doing keto, so I'm not going to do that. But also something that works well is you could brush on a little bit of the uh, sweet chili glaze that you use for like Asian food, which is a really good complement to this. Do remember that if you put any moisture into it, it's gonna take longer to dry and you might even end up finishing it in your oven or in a dehydrator if you have one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a pair of gloves and go ahead and spread this out. So we'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did. I was able to get all that meat on two trays. 
Now notice that there's not any spacing between this. If you were doing something like fish or really lean meat, you'd want to make sure that there was a little bit of spacing. But with something that's really fatty, like uh, a chuck roast or this pork roast, for example, it's going to render and shrink down a little bit, allowing the gaps to form as it smokes. But that's simple. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but you can see that there's a lot of pepper spread throughout that, which is exactly the way I want it. I don't want it clumped up. But if you wanted a little more, you certainly could add a little bit. I like things kind of spicy. So I'm gonna go ahead and treat the corner of this tray with a little bit of red pepper flakes. That's just gonna be enough to just give it a touch of kick to those pieces. And it's really like six pieces of jerky. It's not a whole bunch, just a little bit added on the side. And again, you can put anything you want on there if you have a favorite flavor that you like with your pork jerky. But that, I think, gives a little bit more dimension, so it just adds a little spice to it, but not a lot. Now, I set everything out on the drying rack, as you saw there, and then I deliberately let it rest for about 15 minutes. I wanted it to come up in temperature a little bit and make sure that the seasonings were all nice and tacky on there. Something else is that gave me time to go ahead and preheat the smoker and check on everything. I got the smoker tray out, and the first thing that I did was I made a tinfoil tray. Now, of course, you could buy little generic tinfoil trays on Amazon all day long if you want, but I just make them with some heavy duty foil, fold them up, give them a little bit of edge there so that way when the drippings drop on there, if there's a lot of grease, it won't roll into the smoker. The main idea with this is so that way you can keep your smoker clean. A secondary benefit to using a tinfoil tray is that if you're putting a uh, like a pellet tray in there, like an amazing smoker tray, it will keep the heat from going straight up. It'll diffuse it a little bit and spread it out. Or you can also move the factory drip tray up a level and put the pellet tray right here on the bottom, which is kind of what I normally do anyway. Now here's the trays. And this is the one with the red pepper flakes on it. I'm gonna set that in the middle. And then this is just the plain one with the regular pepper seasoning. Now remember, I added garlic to this, so you can smell the garlic in there, and that's gonna go great with the pork. Something else as a little tip, two little tiny river rocks on the foil tray. One on each corner, and it'll keep it down. And because it's foil, they don't have to be heavy, but we want it so that way it doesn't move around. And today is not very windy, just really rainy. I didn't plan for that. But that'll solve that problem there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna load it in the smoker here. This is just your standard Big Chief top load smoker without any modifications. Now take it in there push the feet up against the one side, and then drop it straight down. Put the lid in at an angle, kind of squeeze it together, and boom, it's sealed. Now, the feet drop all the way down through the unit and end up on the ground. Do not put this unit on a burnable surface. No plastic, no wood. Um, I would just put it in your driveway. In our case, we have it on some uh, landscaping blocks because I want to keep it up here where you can see it good, but I also want to make sure it's not directly contacting the ground. I have already preheated the smoker, so it's nice and warm, and this pan is hot, so don't touch it. I'm going to put the pan on this cookie sheet. Now for pork, I like to use something along the lines of apple, and notice it moved over. But if I were doing beef, I would probably lean towards hickory. And even if I was doing something like fish, I might combine it starting with hickory and moving to apple, depending on how long I wanted to smoke it. 
Another good option is Pecan, but this company doesn't make a Pecan currently. I'm hoping that they will in the future. So I'm gonna lay a nice layer on there, but I'm not gonna fill it all the way up. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a swirl so it's level. I don't wanna push it tight against the edges because the edges tend not to burn very well. Then I'm gonna use some wood chunks. Now I could have used wood chunks from their brand, of course. I just didn't happen to have any today. So this is one of the wood chip brands that I use. I like to use these because they also work really well when I do a charcoal snake method. And if I can keep less different items around, that's great because I have so much junk. So I'm just gonna spread a pile of that in here. And if I get any really big chunks, I'll just put them back in the bag. So there's a couple of big ones here that I'm just gonna pick out. Then I'm gonna put more apple on here. So I'm gonna hold this up so you can kind of get a look at it. And it's really just like a mound. The only thing is, is that we need to make sure that the mound isn't higher than the door opening on the bottom of the smoker. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in there. And it was almost exactly the right height. It just barely touched. And honestly, that could have been just me leaning it too far forward. Since everything is preheated, it should only take about 15 minutes for the smoke to really start rolling. That'll be a second for you we are rolling right along and the smoke is coming out right on schedule. Because we preheated the smoker and the pan, we got smoke within 15 minutes. Now, I don't know how well you can see that running around the edges. I can see it pretty good, but I'm gonna go ahead and open the lid, which I do not recommend you do. This is just so that way you guys can take a look. And the smoke is just rolling out. Now for time, it's gonna be a little while. There's no actual time on the jerky directions. For some reason, I thought it was like three to four hours, but it's clearly not even marked on here. Now, there is a directions for the smoker to dehydrator for temperature setting, but this unit here on a normal day will run at 165 degrees. Now, if it's 90 degrees out, you're probably gonna run about 175. And if it's 20 degrees out, well, you, you're gonna need to use the blanket like one of these um, Smoke Chief foil blanket wraps. And that'll help keep in the heat that it generates. But the goal here is to add the smoke and dehydrate the jerky at the same time. Once the jerky gets to a point to where you're happy with the smoke level, if you want, you could transfer it into your oven and adjust the temperature there. Most ovens won't go much below 185 degrees, so then you would end up with a higher temperature. What I do is if it rolls past bedtime, I will preheat my oven to 200 degrees, I will put the jerky in there, I will wait five minutes, and then I'll turn the oven off and go to bed. What happens is, is the oven gets warm, the jerky gets warm, and then it just slowly dissipates that heat over the period of about four hours, and by the morning, it's almost always done. But be careful not to overheat it because you will turn your jerky really, really dry if you overdo it. So we're gonna let this go for about four hours before we check on it. That'll only be a couple of seconds for you and a long wait for me. So I'm gonna go get a cup of coffee. We put in four pans of wood chips so far and now is the point of time where we wanna check and see how much more smoke we're gonna need. So it's been about four and a half hours and that we really had it going really good and I just waited for it to completely stop burning. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this pan. See how close I can get it here for you. And you can see that it's really ashy in here but around the edges, there's a lot of light brown color or dark brown, I guess. 
which means that it's pretty much, there's still a little unburned. If you wanted to get more out of it, you could shake it down a little bit and it would burn a little bit more. I'm gonna set this back in there for a second while we move on to the next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Now I'm gonna lift this up just a little bit and I'm gonna take a look at it and I'm gonna see if there's any pieces along the edge that look like they're fully cooked. Now again, we added the prog powder to it and worked it overnight, so it should be lightly cured. This right here. This little piece here looks like it's uh, safe to eat. Get a little closer here so you can see it. I come closer, but we'll go out of the uh, out of the light there. Light, translucent, a lot of good smoke color to it. It's still pretty soft and a little moist, but it's definitely cooked all the way through. Chewy like a jerky. Just a touch on the salty side. Smokes really close. I think I'm gonna hit it with at least one more pan. But boy, that's pretty good. And uh, the combination of the pepper and the garlic really turned out well. Actually, for me, I think it could have used a little more pepper, but I think everybody else is gonna enjoy it because I like my food pretty spicy. So I'm gonna go ahead and load one more pan, and I'm gonna not even consider touching it for another two more hours. And then that'll be a couple seconds for you. We'll take another look at it and go from there. It's been almost two hours, so we're ready to go ahead and pull that out. If it's not completely done, We'll finish it in the oven just because we want to dry it out. And I know that we have enough smoke flavor in here. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's going to get dark pretty soon. And the weather is definitely not going to cooperate. So I had to open the lid and then I'm just going to go ahead and unplug it. It is a bit warm, but it's not really an issue for me. If you have a problem with the uh, hot temperatures, you might want to use an oven glove or something. So I let it cool for a couple of minutes here and uh, I kind of inspected it a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna pull some off of this bottom section here because it's a little more well done. I'll go ahead and bring that up to the camera and show it to you. See how close I can get before we lose light. That's pretty good. Now, I can pull it apart kind of where the, where the fat meets. And it is jerky consistency, so it's not like falling apart. We got the perfect amount of smoke in this piece. So I'm hoping they're all have the same uh, taste and consistency. Well, that's pretty good. It does need to dry a bit more. There's still a lot of fat in there. That's tasty. Some of these little bit uh, chunkier pieces here are gonna be a little bit softer and a little less jerky consistency and more of a meat consistency. If I think about the taste, it reminds me of kind of somewhere in between a uh, 
jerky and a dried fish. The pork itself is very mellow. It's a little chewy. Uh, that piece is perfect. See if you can see that. Yeah, it's a little more chunky, gives it a little bit more of that meat consistency. So, I probably cut this piece a little bit thicker. Now, normally, I would either use a pork butt or a pork loin. If I did the loin, I would do it in a liquid brine. And with the pork butt, this is how I normally would prepare that in a dry brine. But again, we're uh, wanting to use the Smokehouse products thing. I'm gonna go ahead and dry the jerky out inside. I wanted to go ahead and add this little section to the video so that way you could see the final results. I know I always say that, you know, I'll just show you some pictures, but sometimes you just have to take a look. So last night I put in the jerky in the oven like I had told you I was gonna do at 185 for two more hours. And the jerky dried out really nice. Now this, little bag here is the bag with the hot jerky in it and I'm just going to show that to you tilt it a little bit so you can see different angles with the lighting and then this bag is the regular I'm going to take one piece out of here and this one here. Now the one downside to pork jerky, it is a kind of fatty and fat can go rancid. So that's another reason that I like to refrigerate my stuff. Of course, I'm super OCD with food handling. I have a food handler's card. I know how to store and what temperatures and all the safety zone stuff, which you should really be careful with. But I like to put it in the refrigerator anyway. It keeps it nice and firm. And then I'm just going to show you here, so real soft, and I'm just going to snap it in half. And look at that, it comes apart just like jerk. You can see that there's just a little bit of fibers going across there, and just similar to the grain of the meat, no big deal there. But look, it just comes right apart. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. And this is the first piece that I've had this morning. I tried it last night and I was really happy with it. But I even like it better cold. The smoke level turned out exactly perfect. I was worried that I might have gone just a little over, but after a night in the fridge and a little bit of time in the oven, of course, it really mellowed really well and blended into the meat. So it's not sitting right on the surface. But while well, that's good, and that two hours at 185, broke down most of the connective tissue and really gave it the consistency that I wanted. So back to the regular video. This is really tasty. I love the balance of the pepper that comes with the package and then the garlic that I added. This is uh, really good and really easy. You don't have to have a big complicated recipe and you can just prep up whatever meat you want, whether it be a roast or a blade roast whatever type of meat you want. Um, I would say normally I cross cut the grain on a beef roast of sorts, whether it be something like a London broil or even a tri-tip down across it works really well. And then of course my favorite would be chuck roast. Thanks for watching. This is all done with the Smokehouse product stuff. If you're interested in any of that stuff, I have affiliate links below. I will get compensated for those. Uh, and they don't cost you anything extra. Uh, and I'm going to go enjoy some jerky and finish it up inside. So you have a great day.